out. Good evening, welcome to BCHL Central. I'm your host, Tally Campbell, live from the Prospera Center here in Chilliwack, British Columbia for the 2013 Bauer Showcase, our first ever live production here on VSBN.ca. Lots going on tonight. First, passing to our Nick Bannon talking to Austin Plebe of the Chilliwack Chiefs. Thank you, Tally. And yes, I'm here with Austin Plebe of the Chilliwack Chiefs. Austin, first of all, how does it feel to be able to play with your brother for the first time in your BCHL career? Uh, it's, it's awesome. I mean, not for many people get the chance to do that, play with a brother. Um, it's, been, it's been awesome so far. I've been out here for about three weeks. We're actually living together in the same build house. So uh, we haven't gotten under each other's skin yet, but well, it's, it's, it'll be a fun year. And now I was hoping that, that you would be able to tell us a bit more about next year as well. You're going to Merrimack in Boston. What are your thoughts on this as being your last season in the BCHL? Um, I mean, last year I was thinking of the same thing. It was my last year, but a couple things changed as far as schooling and obviously my brother coming back. But, I mean, it kind of sinks in now that this is kind of your last. Every rink you go to, that's going to be your last game in that rink. I mean, I've been playing since I was 15. So, I mean, i gotta, I got to enjoy it and have fun this last year and, and be successful. And, of course, as you said, you're in your last year, how does it feel with the pressure of being one of the top guys in the locker room and on the ace? You've got to carry the team almost on your back now after a lot of guys left last season due to age restrictions. Yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, we lost a lot of good guys, not just good hockey players, but good guys in the dressing room too. But uh, our coaches, Harv, and they've done a great job recruiting some guys. I think we got a lot of good players. Uh, they're young. We're coming together. We're working hard in practice. And I think in a couple weeks we're going we're gonna to be beating some teams. We just can, might, be a little, might be a little slow at the start. Now, can I get your thoughts on the 2013 Bauer BCHL Showcase? Uh, it's awesome. I think everyone involved, all the volunteers, everyone did a fantastic job. I mean, obviously being in our rink and living 10 minutes from the rink is awesome. Not having to sleep in a hotel or anything like that, being to sleep in your own bed, nice home-cooked meal before the games, it's definitely a plus. And I would just like to thank everyone with the organization, all the volunteers that helped out this weekend and make it awesome for all the players. Thank you so much, Austin. Back to you, Tally. Great, thank you, Nick. We're going to update all the scores from all three days here at the 2013 Bauer Showcase. But first, pass things back to Nick Bauer, talking to Glenn Ringdahl, the president of the Chilliwack Chiefs. Thank you, and yes, I'm here with Glenn Ringdahl, pardon me. Can I get your thoughts on the showcase overall? Was it better than last year? Did it top last year, not just economic-wise, but fanfare? Well, it certainly did fan-wise. Uh, we had a lot more people come out from other uh, clubs to watch their teams play here. I think they took advantage of the fact that uh, it's a good opportunity to have a little vacation as well, watch their uh, children or their nephews or whatever they turn out to be. Uh, but yeah, we had a lot more people come from uh, distant places and our own fans here uh, turned out better than they did last year as well. So overall, from that point of view, a very good success. And at the moment, I know things aren't finalized about the attendance numbers, but can you give us a ballpark figure about how many people were here at the 2013 Bauer BCHL Showcase? We probably had an average of a thousand people in the building at any given time over the 16 games. So uh, what the total number will be, yeah, you're right. I don't know yet until we see the numbers tomorrow, but uh, I know it's going to be better than last year. Uh, and our, of course, our, the big part of this whole thing is the scouts. That's really why we do a showcase, to show off our team, our players, uh, to the scouts so from all over North America, from the National Hockey League, other professional leagues, and most importantly from the UN universities, both in Canada and in the United States. Our kids are in this league hopefully to have an opportunity to get a scholarship to a, an important school, play hockey through college, and then maybe go on in hockey or on in business or life. And now this is your second consecutive year hosting it in Chilliwack, the Bauer BCHL Showcase. Can you see it coming back next season? Well, we'd certainly do it if the board asked us to. Uh, it, when we created this thing two years ago, the notion was that it would be on wheels. Uh, but uh, after one year, we thought it made more sense to keep it here. Uh, the scouts really enjoyed it because it's so accessible. 
the fact that we have a double rink and we're very physically suitable for it made us attractive. And the fact is, I stuck my hand up again. So, <laughs> uh, and uh, I'll do it again if if that's what's required to make sure that we have a successful showcase next year. Thank you so much, Glenn. Back to you at the desk. Thank you. Great, thank you, Nick. Now, Nick joins us here at the desk now. The Chilliwack Chiefs just finishing up their public skate behind us after their game. We're going to update all three games, of course. Uh, the first off, the showcase was a Friday morning. Penticton beat the Victoria Grizzlies 2-1. to Brad Muclair scores the first goal of the season. First goal of the season, first goal of the season for himself. Brand new captain for the Penticton Vs. Great to get that monkey off your back. But, of course, a lot of people were watching number 15 on the Vs. That's Jack Ramsey. He's ranked 27th overall on Craig Button's scouting list. You can view that on tsn.ca. Of course, and also another good point in that thing, Nick Renier, the starting goal in Victoria Gullies, was a backup goaltender for the uh, Penticton Vs last season. What pressure was he under that game? Immense pressure, but at the same time, there's a lot of motivation. When you're a backup, you always want to take over the reins. You want to take that starter's job. We saw that in Vancouver, of course, with the Canucks. We all know about that story. And he had the uh, chance to prove his old team wrong, and he attempted to do so. It didn't come up on the winning side. And then following that game, Merritt Centennials beat the Express 5-2. In that game, there was a big question. Can Russell Sanderson take the reins of the pipes and sail his ship in the right direction? He did that. They won it 5-2, him and Ned. And it looks at the moment he can take the reins and be a, uh, a great starter in the BCHL. Absolutely. Russell Sanderson, of course, got 31 saves in that game, played 11 games last season. And next up, Langley Riverman beat the Trail Smoke Eaters 4-3 in overtime. Well, it was 3-3 until overtime, until the new captain, Mitch McLean, the everybody's kind of man. He's got to get his lunch bucket, go to work. And that's exactly what he did in overtime. Johnny on the spot, he was able to do a great job showing his team why he's the captain. Through blood, sweat, and tears, able to get that goal, get the first win. And he helped a couple of the young guys set up a few goals. Absolutely. Brendan Kearney, of course, 18-year-old rookie. He got two goals and, of course, Mitch assistant on one of those. Uh, Surrey Eagles finished off the night with a shutout 3-0. You got to give it to Victor Adamo. The guy who's taken over from Michael Santaguida, the guy who led the Surrey Eagles to the RBC Cup. How much pressure is he under? A ton. But he was able to stop all 40 shots, going side to side, stacking the pads like Marty Brodeur. This guy was unbelievable. Absolutely. Then day two, Surrey had the other end of the stick. 7-3, Vernon beat them. Oh, the Vipers pulled away in the third period. You know... Surrey Eagles started out pretty well. They didn't have Adamo in, in net. They decided to give him a rest. Of course, during the showcase, you have a lot of scouts here. You want scouts to see both your goalies, all your players, as many as possible. So that's going to happen, but they're going to move forward. Unfortunately, of course, Bo Dador's first uh, BCHL game didn't go probably the way he wanted to. However, last season with the Northwest Giants, the BC Major Midget League, he uh, averaged a 1.84 goals against average. So not too bad. Not too bad, but this is the BCHL, and we'll see how he does over the next couple of games that he gets. And he's backing up Victor Damo, no doubt, this season. We'll see what he can do in his future. Absolutely. Following that, Victoria Gillies beat the Salmon Armour Silverbacks 5-4 to in overtime. Roy McGuire scoring the overtime goal. He scored the overtime winner, but of course, it was triple trouble. You talk about double trouble with the Sedin twins. Well, in Victoria, you got triple trouble. You got Leo, you have Miles, and you have Jerry. They all combined for three out of the five Victoria goals. They actually... You know, all hooked up on what, the very first goal, pardon me, for the Victoria Grizzlies in that game. Absolutely. The Clippers beat the West Clinton Warriors 6-5. to five. Sheldon Rempel, two goals and one assist, only 18 years old. He's going to be a force to reckon with this season. He is going to be a force to reckon with. I'm excited to see this kid. I'm also excited to see the man you can't argue with. Yes, you're going to hate that pun, but Jason <laughs> Argue, stopping 43 out of 48 shots. His team only managed 16 shots on, uh, pardon me, against... And, you know, you need some more shots to back up your great goaltending play. You stop 43 shots, you're expecting at least 20, 30 shots. Going the other way, try and get some more goals, make your night easier. Absolutely. And Penticton V's beat the Port Alberni Valley Bulldogs 3-2. to two. A close game that was. It was a very close game. The V's, they basically just outshot the Alberni, pardon me, the, the Bulldogs there. Pardon me, I'm no worries, getting no worries. wrong there. It still upsets me, though, when your team does not shoot enough to back up your great goaltending. When your goalie's doing everything he can, he expects his team and his teammates in the end his partners to do their job and get some shots going the other way they were unable to do that absolutely and couch valley capitals beat the uh, spruce kings four to three it was a comeback three goals in the last 14 minutes for the couch valley capitals of course the man gelsinger scoring the game winner on the power play they went one for five on the power play tally you had four other opportunities to pull away in that game you didn't do that special teams are a huge thing in junior hockey they need to regroup and work on their special teams there because it shouldn't have been that close of a game and to end the night here at the prospero center the Palver Kings beat the host team, the Chilak Chiefs, 6-1. to one. That was unexpected. The night before, we were talking about that particular game, saying you would have to favor the Chilliwack Chiefs. Not in that appearance. The young guns, the Powell River 
Powell River, pardon me, they came out guns blazing. We're able to get a ton past the defense of the Chilliwack Chiefs, who disappointed their hometown fans. And then, of course, this morning, the Power Kings are back in action against the Salmon Arm Silverbacks, winning 5-1. to one. As Nick just mentioned, the young guns, Curtis McCarrick, Jerry Luskarevich, uh, Luke McGraw, many, many more are that team's heart. Well, that's exactly it. These guys, they don't stop. I don't even know if they sleep, Tally. I mean, you have one late night game, you got to get up and be ready to go in the BCHL. You don't have a second off, you don't have a shift off. They did just that. But you look at the Silverbacks, they went one for eight on the power play. You have seven opportunities, just like I said before, with a couple other teams already throughout the showcase, you need to capitalize on your chances. They didn't do that, and Powell River just ran wild on them. We talked about that, about the, you know, they had the late game last night against Chilliwack, and the morning game at 10.30 this morning. That's quite the turnaround. I mean, for us here, we finish our show at about 10.30, get back to the hotel at 11. I don't get to bed until about 12 because of the adrenaline I'm having because hosting a show. Imagine hockey players, first piece of the game, how could they do that? I was tired this morning I got to the rink. I almost fell asleep on the way here. Of course I didn't. Safe driving as always. But it's just amazing hockey players and athletes how they could be they could have been fast asleep on the way here, on the bus. But as soon as they hit the rink, they're ready to go. They're up and at them. When they tie those laces, they smell the ice. Oh, it gets something going in their veins. Absolutely. And the Kobe Express beat the Portal Burning Valley Bulldogs nine to four. Wow. This is a football. I know game. the NFL season's starting, but we're at the BCHL showcase, and Joey Santucci, he had the hat trick, the first one of the season, the only one of the showcase. The kid only played six games last year for the Coquitlam, Coquitlam Express. I don't think he's going to have a problem staying on this roster now. Absolutely. Now, McClure's beat the Spruce Kings 3-1. Uh, to one. Jason Ari, of course, huge first star, 30 saves, and even I saw some scouts talking to him after the game. Oh, no doubt. This guy, he's already showing he's going to be a force to reckon with, Dolly, in the BCHL, and at the BCHL showcase, teams are watching other players that's one of the great things about the Bauer BCHL showcase not just for the scouts but for other GMs and coaches to look at their competition they're looking at Jason Argue scratching their heads going bald thinking how are we going to get one past this kid absolutely and then trail beat couch by capitals six to do and your boy got a couple goals out here Brendan Lamont two goals a former Langley fundamental this guy was on fire his parents were in the crowd early on he gets one he gets the other he did a great job and you got to hand it to the kid I mean he didn't get a whole lot of ice time in Merritt, was traded to uh, the Trail Smoke Eaters, getting a lot more playing time, and he's making use of it, showing him the coach why he belongs on the ice. Langley Ruin beat the Merritt Centennials 1-0 uh, just a wee while back. Uh, the Merritt seems to be a very small team. However, it reminds many people of their head coach, Luke, who was very small back in his day, but played 100% every single game. The thing is, yes, Merritt is small, Tally. But the Langley Rivermen are just huge. You look at their top two centermen, Matt Ustaski, 6'6", Jacob Reichert, 6'5". Unbelievable. If I were to interview these guys, I'd probably pull out my shoulder trying to get my mic up there. But they did a beautiful job securing the one nothing win. Mark Whiteley getting the, his first goal of the season. That guy is like, a, he reminds me of a young Chris Tan of Mark Whiteley. But also, you have to look at Brock Crosswaith stopping everything he saw, stopping all 22 shots for his first shutout of the season. He's going to make James Barr. You know, he's going to make him sweat a little for his job in between the pipes. Definitely. Arguably the best game behind us just happened a moment ago. Chilliwack Chiefs versus the Vernon Vipers. It went to double overtime. Uh, of course, this result was 1-1. Now, this BCH showcase, of course, 16 games. I think we've seen everything. We've seen, of course, first goal, first fight, first Pelly shot. Uh, of course, first overtime now. Uh, sorry, shut, uh, sorry uh, tiebreaker, sorry. Yeah. Uh, you see everything in these 16 games uh, weekend. That's exactly it. 16 games. Every team plays two. And in this game, it went 4-4, four and four. nothing was solved. So they went 3-on-3, three three. still nothing, nothing solved. And it ended with a tie, which disappoints me. But before we get to any of that, you know me and ties. I can't stand them. The, otherwise, the fans just could have stayed home and just read the, read the reviews saying, that oh, it just ended the same way as it started. But you got to look at Lyndon Stanwood. This kid stopped 42 shots. Somebody please get him an ice bag. I mean, he was unbelievable. I don't even know how he could stretch out his legs like that. Humanly possible if I did that? Please call an ambulance. And I mean, Chilliwack Chief players also deflected a lot of shots as well. They did. Austin Plevy early on. I mean, we had him just a few moments ago as one of our guests. And I talked to him and he said he got it in the side. Just put some ice on it. He's tough and he wanted to play. It's a BCHL showcase. This is where the lights are on bright before the playoffs. Absolutely. And now to think about it, there's five days until the next BCHL hockey game. What are we going to do? I, you know, honestly, there's nothing we can do. I... We could try and get a road hockey game going, but... Hey, might as well, hey. Yeah, we need our hockey fix as much as possible, and I'm looking so full much forward. Pardon me, I'm looking forward in general to the BCHL season as it gets underway next week. Uh, and Nick, lastly, what did you think about this entire experience uh, at the BCHL Showcase? 
what was the first time we did anything like this tally and it was amazing from the volunteers to the fans to the people at the Prospera Center. Of course the players, coaches, everybody involved were unbelievable. We, I got to say thank you myself for all the interviews that I was able to do and just all the hockey that we were able to see was just unbelievable because after a long summer, that's you just need your fix. I mean, I think we owe a huge fan to, of course, the Prospera Center, the Chilliwack Chiefs organization, everybody we interviewed the entire, in the entire weekend, rather, uh, and of course our own team, yourself, uh, our producer uh, Bill Stewart, our editor and, uh, and camera operator Chris Munz Micklin, those two have been working hard behind the scenes. I don't even know if they slept yet, to be honest. I mean, I, you can't see them right now, but they are still working at this moment. As we are doing our thing here, this is nothing compared to what they do. Well, and we appreciate it so much. Bill and Chris, thank you very much for everything you've done. And I mean, another reason why this show's live. That's the reason why we even have this desk. Absolutely. Well, from the Prospero Center here at the Bauer Showcase, have a fantastic night. We'll see you guys later on. Make sure to check all your amateur sports needs at www.vsbn.ca. Have a good night.